NBC's Garrett Hake is reporting from Washington, D.C. Also with us, Matthew Dowd, former chief strategist for the Bush-Cheney 2004 campaign and a senior MSNBC political analyst. So, Garrett, Donald Trump doubling down, tripling down on his rhetoric. Uh, I guess the question is, when we look at those polls and how close it is, is the belief is that is going to resonate with these swing voters? Well, Chris, I think there are a couple parts of this. First, for Donald Trump, that rhetoric is what has worked for him throughout his political career. It's very similar to the way he was talking when he first became a political candidate back in 2015. And he believes both it sort of it, it is exactly how he feels about these issues. He is speaking his true feelings on these matters. And he, think it's, he thinks it's going to work to a certain extent to basically try to scare voters back into his camp. We, I've reported on this show before that you're not going to see Donald Trump trying to reach out and, and kind of, you know, coddle the Nikki Haley voting segment of the Republican Party. He's not going to try to build a bridge for them to come back across into the MAGA universe. What he's going to try to do is lower their opinion of Joe Biden and his policies so far that they feel like they have no choice but to come back to him. And on immigration, an issue in which he's the most comfortable going that dark and deep, you see that kind of rhetoric on the campaign trail. And Chris, if you look at the polling, including in that Wall Street Journal poll, it is to a certain degree working. Voters are saying they trust Joe Biden and more, or excuse me, they trust Donald Trump more than Joe Biden to deal with border issues. I mean, is that the problem, really, when you think about it, Matthew? Um, because so far, there's no indication in the polling that what Biden is saying about immigration is working. And even when Donald Trump says things that are arguably racist, that are provably yeah. untrue, when you look at this, 52 percent to 32 percent, voters think he's best able to handle immigration and border security? Well, in my mind, the, the strategy of the Biden effort is not to win on immigration. It's just to cut the margin that they're losing on. He doesn't need to win immigration. He just doesn't, he doesn't, he's not able to be beaten by 20 points on that issue. And so cut the margin, undercut Donald Trump to some degree on it. But I think in the end, you know, as we examine these polls and, and we're in April of 2024, and we look at this election landscape, the fascinating thing to me is nobody that is willing that it will give a prediction today has should have any confidence in what that prediction will be. Because at this point in time, it wouldn't be surprising if Donald Trump won the election. And simultaneously, it wouldn't be surprising if Joe Biden won this election. When you look at all the polls, in all the key states and nationally in the course of this. And this is the interesting dynamic of this race to me, and it talks about immigration, is who is this race going to be about? I think the Biden campaign wants to make it about Donald Trump, and I think the Trump campaign wants to make it about Joe Biden. So they're each going to be pointing their fingers across their chest, saying this race is about that person and what the country is. And I think right now, this is a coin flip race in the presidential race, and we don't normally have those kind of races when we head in six, seven months before Election Day. And in fact, Matthew, that Wall Street Journal poll does show Biden and Trump neck and neck in every swing state. And the editor, Aaron Zittner, the guy we played earlier, told MSNBC it reveals that highly unsettled electorate. I mean, is the thought they're going to settle down between now and November? Um, he thinks that at least the indications in the poll are that those who say they're undecided uh, or voting third party will ultimately come home to one of the major parties. Well, I think this is a race, and Garrett's going to have his job ahead of him. I'll just sort of give a prediction for that, is that this is a race where moments in the, in the next seven months are going to be more decisive than any political advertising that's done by the campaigns or any speeches done by the campaigns. It's going to be moments and their impact. It could be a court trial result for Donald Trump. It could be an international event. It could be a sense that the economy is doing better or is doing worse. And then finally, if we have them, the debates could be exceedingly important. So to me, this campaign is going to be the pivot on this campaign going from a dead even race to a four or five point advantage race on either side is going to be decided by many of the unknown moments in the next seven months. So, Garrett, feel free to, to say whether you think that's what you're hearing as well. But we do know for Democrats, right, they're putting a lot of their eggs in, in November into the abortion basket. And last night, Donald Trump was asked about Florida's six-week ban. Mr. President, 
Do you support the six-week abortion ban that the Florida Supreme Court just upheld? So they booed the reporter, obviously, yeah. in case there's any confusion about that. Uh, but, uh, Trump says he's going to put it off until next week. I mean, it's not exactly an issue that has snuck up on them. So what's that about? All right. So two things. First of all, I agree with Matthew on the idea that this election could be decided by moments. And I think it's one of the reasons you see Donald Trump trying to bait and goad and tempt Joe Biden into a debate, because the Trump campaign believes Joe Biden will, like most incumbent presidents, struggle mightily in at least a first debate, and that that might be enough for them to make uh, significant inroads and open up this race a little bit. Now, on abortion specifically, this has long been an issue in which Trump has been all over the map. He has taken almost every conceivable position on abortion over the course of his political and private uh, career in business as a sort of business celebrity who remarked on just about everything prior to his political life here. Of late, his campaign and his allies have signaled that where he's probably going to land is to try to leave this issue to the states, which is not exactly a position on the issue of abortion at all. I'm very interested to see whether or not this a statement in a week becomes a two weeks, becomes three weeks, as we often saw with him when he was President Trump and would push things off several weeks at a time to get his legs out from under him. But the reality is the abortion politics are not going to change here dramatically. And at some point, he's going to either have to make a much more specific set of what his policies are on abortion or have the issue defined for him, as the Biden campaign has tried to do by pointing out that he appointed the justices who overturned Roe versus Wade and bragged about it. And unless and until Donald Trump says something something different, that will likely be the albatross hung around his neck by the Biden campaign. Garrett Hake and Matthew Dowd. Oh, Matthew, remember when being a flip-flopper used to be a bad thing in American <laughs> politics? <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.